this is Mani Rabu from uh, Batan. Uh, I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Sela Sadakau from uh, Batukola. I only listen to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Vale and I'm working at Golden Crown Resort and I love listening to Gold FM because it plays a really wide range of classic hits. I'm Saini Sakio from Kashmir Lotoka. I like Gold FM, but only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spade. This is FBC News. Tonight, racist comments against Fijian rugby players draws a wide backlash. Sadelpa denies rift in party despite accusations. And principals gather to draw up plans for the future of students. Australian and New Zealand media have this week been rife with opposition and criticism of former Parramatta Eels utility Jared Hain. Many reports have been borderline disrespectful and heavily biased. However, one particular opinion column in New Zealand may have gone too far in questioning Hain's inclusion in the extended Vodafone Fiji 7 squad. Vashnil Prasad with the story. Fiji 7s and its newest recruit Jared Hain have been under constant attack from so-called journalists, but rugby heaven has crossed the limits. An opinion column by former Wallaby Peter Fitzsimmons calls Fijians bastards, while referring to locals who have worked hard to try and secure a spot in the team to Rio. It's uh, quite disappointing eh? um, uh, that uh, you know some uh, respected uh, media personals eh, have resorted to using this kind of terms. Eh? Uh, in referring to Fijian players. Eh? The opinion piece makes numerous attacks against Hain and his history with the National Rugby League, going so far as to headline the article, Pay Hain what he's worth, but don't let him play sevens for Fiji. One of Fiji's most experienced sports administrators, Vidya Lakan, has expressed disgust at the level of reporting. Freedom of speech. So we can speak very freely, but I think we should be mindful of what we say and about whom. And I, I think some of the comments made there is uh, maybe is coming out of a very sick mind. Lakan, who has been a former president at FASNOC and part of the International Olympic Committee for years, says the Olympics for true athletes is never about money. When it comes to Olympic, it's not, it's not money. It, it, it's the pride. Uh, the opportunity to represent one's country at the Olympic Games. That's what drives them. So going to the Olympics, no athlete makes money. They lose money. Professional athletes, they lose money. The media frenzy about Hain switching to sevens has captured the sporting world. And coach Ben Ryan has dedicated a fair amount of time to keeping reporters at bay. Lacan says Ryan needs to carry on what he's been doing all along. Barking dogs, let them bark. A disappointed FIU chief executive, John O'Connor, hopes to pursue this with relevant authorities in New Zealand. I uh, have a look and seek some advice eh, on uh, you know, the use of such terms eh, and whether there's a uh, check in Australia, what's the possible actions that we can uh, check. Eh? So that's something we'll check. Uh. While the Rugby Heaven article is by far the most critical, it's not the only media outlet placing undue pressure in Hain and the Fiji 7 team. Vashnil Prasad, FBC News. Two separate unsolved murder cases have been reopened by police. One concerns the death of a businessman at his place of employment. The rather a student found dead in her home. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Veningilio has confirmed to FBC News that they have reactivated the file of Holland Sito, the local prominent businessman found dead in his office in the Suva suburb of Lavala Beach in January last year. While a few people had been questioned in relation to Sito's death, no one has been charged yet for the murder. Brigadier General Siti Veningilio adds the second file being reopened is that of the death of a 12-year-old girl whose body was found in her home in Samambula Suva in 2014. The police commissioner says two teams are currently working on these files and he's happy with the progress they have made. 
Much has been said about an internal email circulation within the Sedalpa in a bid to remove opposition MP Aseri Randrondro. This comes after opposition MP Biman Prasad was removed as chairman of the Public Accounts Committee last week. However, the Social Democratic Liberal Party office refutes this. Akusita Thale has more. Sodalpa denies claims that some of its officials are calling for the expulsion of opposition MP and the current PEC member Aseri Randrondro. Email this. Uh, it's, it's not to expel or to remove Honorable Randrondo. It just concerns on uh, the matter that was brought by uh, the recent uh, former chair of the Public Accounts Committee. It's, it's not party members asking for Honorable Randrondo's approval. It just concerns on what happened. The party says MP Randrondo cannot just be removed or expelled because the party has to comply with the requirements of its constitution. There has to be first a complaint launch. Uh, from the complaint, then uh, we will uh, set in motion the requirements of the constitution. You know, it has to be investigated, etc. The board will be given a report by the disability committee on uh, what should be done to the complaint that was launched to the board. Andy Litia says there has to be a complaint first, then someone might be dismissed, reprimanded, suspended or even expelled from the party. That will be entirely decided by the board. However, there has been no written complaint so far. Attempts to get comments from opposition MP Aseri Randondo still remain futile as this bulletin goes to air. Akusita Tale, FBC News. As our global economy expands, the school systems in the country need to respond better to the challenging demands in the education sector. The president for Fiji Principals Association, Anita Gounder, says educators must teach students skills to match times. Kelly Vavala has the details. The theme for this year's Fiji Principals Association conference is preparing 21st century students for a global society aiming at preparing students for long life success through the current education world. All educators want their students to succeed in life. What was considered a good education 50 years ago, however, is no longer enough for success in college, career and citizenship. As our global economy expands, our need to prepare this next generation for new careers becomes even more imperative. President of Fiji, Major General Chiyoti Kondrote officiated at the forum. He says it comes at the best time to deal with the devastation of tropical cyclone Winston. The conference has come at a time when the nation is getting back on its feet after a battering from the most destructive cyclone to hit our beloved country. This is also reflective of the nation's approach which is essentially one of resilience and of trying to return life to normality as quickly as humanly possible. The 117th Principal Conference will provide support, encouragement and professional developments for all secondary school principals and leadership in all aspects of education in consultation with the Ministry of Education and its relevant stakeholders. Kelly Vavala, FBC News. Government ministries, departments and other agencies are now submitting requests for the 2016-2017 fiscal year. National budget consultations this week are led by Finance Minister Ayo Said Kayum. Said Kayum says the upcoming budget will focus on promoting inclusivity and broad-based growth to create sustainable employment in the aftermath of Cyclone Winston. He says the priority is funding policies focused on boosting our climate resilience and rebuilding from the cyclone. The Attorney General also stressed the importance of consultations with the public. Talks will also be held with key non-government organizations and other stakeholders in the coming days. Coming up on FBC News, Health Ministry continues work on rebuilding damaged facilities and works progress well in rebuilding of QVS. Stay with us. I'm Sarah, I'm from Tafwa, and I like to listen to the FM, to the FM Rocks. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Ghana I listen to Maria on the traffic jam in the afternoon. Hi, my name is Salah, I live in Asinu, to the FM Rocks. My name is Denasa, and I'm from Lotoka, and I love listening to the day FM. My name is Mulamila, I work at Golden Point Resort, I love listening to today FM, it rocks in Rakiraki. I'm Mary from Mandela, 
I love listening to the DFM. To the DFM rock. We love listening to the DFM. To the DFM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. Welcome back. This is FBC News. The completion of post-disaster national analysis has given the health ministry an indication on where to start in the rebuilding and rehabilitation of damaged health facilities. Health Minister Chone Usumate says development partners have come on board to help in this expensive process. Sainiani Mboila reports. The health ministry is currently working around the clock, carrying out repairs and providing continuous services to areas where the health infrastructure was damaged after tropical cyclone Winston. Just com completed this post-disaster uh, PDNA national analysis of the um, of the uh, cyclone, so we know what our losses were and our damages were. Now that will then be fed into a system of trying to sure that we can rehabilitate or fix up the facilities that we have. We have been very grateful. Usamati says the rebuilding and the rehabilitation works won't become cheap and also thanked the Australian government for the assistance rendered. We're grateful for the assistance of some development partners who have come up for some temporary solutions in places like Waimaro, where the Australian government is helping us out put up a temporary structure there and ultimately in the long term there'll have to be something that's built up. And uh, but over time, it'll go into the, the in order to try to rehabilitate all the facilities, going to be expensive. So we need to phase it out, and that is that process is now continuing. The health ministry is hoping to get more overseas development partners to assist in the rehabilitation, which should cost more than six million dollars. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. The Ministry of Ethiopia okay Affairs has revealed that the work on the village bylaws have been completed. This was confirmed to FBC News by Deputy Secretary Ithao K Affairs Simoni Wainbuta. Wainbuta says they will submit it to the Provincial Council next month before it is available to villagers next year. Yeah, right now the work on the village by laws have been completed and uh, according to our set program now mid-July we are taking it to the Provincial Council meetings and the Provincial Offices for final consultation. Yeah? Rehabilitation work under the Adopt a School program at Queen Victoria School in Thailevu is on track to be completed by the Indonesian military in three months' time. Maggie Boyle headed to Thailevu to get an update on the progress of repair works. This was the scene two weeks ago. The damage left by tropical cyclone Winston clear to see. Fast forward and the renovated chapel, a standout feature at Queen Victoria School, is coming together nicely. Start for uh, tiling, right? And we finish for the roof and the ceiling. Now we start for retailing and uh, put the door um, for the veranda also. We, we start for making new veranda over there. Head of the Indonesian military contingent, Major Abdul Arif, says they're working 16 hours, six days a week to get the work done. Every day, every night till uh, 10 p.m. in the evening. Uh, Hopefully we can finish this uh, in the end of uh, this month. Also on hand to assist are soldiers from the Republic of Fiji military, a team of around 20 men. Work here at QVS is on track for completion by August end. And more importantly, the resumption of classes here at Matavatavo. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Two people continue to be questioned for allegedly printing and distributing fake $100 notes. Chief of Intelligence and Investigations ACP Luke Anavela says one of the suspects has revealed the fake $100 notes have been used in outlets throughout the Western Division. Thirty villages in the Bar Province will be part of a vigorous civic education program to empower them in taking ownership of their health and addressing social issues. The program is designed to create awareness on NCD cases and the concerns of gender violence in the rural maritime communities of the West. Madhya Mbolai Tamana with this report. Do you talk about uh, safe sex at home? This European Union funded VCC health centre program has been specifically targeted to empower rural dwellers in the Ba province. We have uh, randomised selected 30 villages in the uh, province of Ba with the uh, surrounding settlements. So what we are trying to do here is to have a uh, 
a uh, multi-pronged approach at the same level with our Indo-Fijian settlements and our Itokese uh, dwellers in the villages. Apart from working with the local government authorities, Basi Sei says the Ministry of Health is also part of their awareness program. Most, mostly with the, with the Ministry of Health, with the community zone nurses who are responsible to, uh, to the recruitment of uh, the community health workers. We will be working with them. This is where the, our, our government partners are very important. These health workers from nearby villages and communities are part of the training program at the VCC Sai Health Center. The knowledge they gain here is what they will cascade when they return to their communities. We need to see that uh, these key people who we are working with are also part of the fold in this uh, approach of trying to uh, uh, make people uh, uh, take ownership of their own health and social, uh, social issues. Eh? The program is expected to roll out to the villages and communities in the western rural regions in the coming month. Madhyum Bolitamana, FBC News. Sports is up next and Jamie's back with the latest. Rakataki and good evening in sports after the break. Jared Hayne has his first run with the Fiji Sevens team. And Fiji football gear up for OFC Nations Cup. This and more coming up. Bula FM nambak dua and seri. While media the world over is still talking about the shock announcement by Jared Hayne to pursue an Olympic dream with Fiji. The former NRL superstar and 49er went through his first training run with the Vodafone Fiji 7 team this morning in London. Coach Ben Ryan tested Hayne in various positions and is likely to include him in the final tall member squad to be announced tomorrow. Rohit Deo with the story. Uh, in the training sessions, Jared's been running mainly at Rover and we've been playing him defensively at sweeper, a bit like a rope, but it's a very short time frame for him to um, get himself into the, the shape where he is going to force his way into the world's best sevens team but we we'll certainly give him every opportunities before we name the side on Friday. With Fiji Sevens hitting the headlines overseas, Ryan says he has managed to keep the players focused. Jared's brought with him a huge amount of Australian journalist media interest from outside the sport really so they've been uh, a bit of a distraction but whilst we've we can we've been able to keep them at arm's length. The dream of winning the back-to-back -back series could be in danger if our national team fails to perform in the pool stages. Can't count our chickens at the moment and we really got to make sure we concentrate on knocking over that first game which will be England at Twickenham and having been on the other side of the fence I know that they'll be targeting that as a huge must-win game for them. Fiji's Olympic contingent is half a million dollars short of their 1.5 million dollar budget for the Rio Games. However, Chef de Mission Cathy Wong says they are hopeful of meeting their target soon. Wong has also thanked its gold sponsors and the Fijian government for its contributions to the team so far. At this stage, we really, as we haven't met our budget, we are urging all the um, corporate organizations and the individuals, particularly the individuals out there on the road in Fiji, please come behind and stand behind Team Fiji. Uh, if you want to be part of the uh, historic event, we, we plan and we hope to create a history in Rio. And if you want to be part of this historic event, come behind us and support us on this road to gold in Rio. Mm -hmm. the government is one of our major, contrib is the major contributors as far as the preparation uh, funds. And they're also contributing towards our participation grant. So government is contributing towards it and they are our major supporter in these things. Meanwhile, Vodafone signed up today as a gold sponsor for Team Fiji to the Rio Games. In addition to its sponsorship, Vodafone is also running a promotion to help raise more funds for the team. Fiji 7s reps Emosi Mulevoro and Nemani Nagusa were on hand today to launch the promotion. Uh, certain proceedings uh, from the mobile phones will go uh, to Team Fiji's preparation towards uh, Rio Olympics. So the, there are three models of phones, 
a J1 Mini, a V Dog 520, and Samsung J5. Uh, if someone buys any of these phones, ten dollars will go uh, from each phone to the to Team Fiji towards their preparation. So this is something additional apart from uh, our sponsorship. The Vodafone Fiji football side is in its last week of preparations before the Oceania Nations Cup in Papua New Guinea. Alvin Singh and Roy Krishna are expected to lead the squad as both players try to their best to impress for spot in the Olympic team to Rio. Rohit Deo with the story. Trying to get the combinations working before the Oceania Nations Cup in Papua New Guinea. So far it's been really good for me. Um, I've been with uh, like uh, training since, uh, since last year uh, with uh, under 23 so it, it has been a good season for me so far. Singh says he has had a great season so far and will be looking to improve on it. Uh, my goal is to make it to that uh, Rio squad. You know how there's three average players allowed, so that's my main goal. And in terms of my the way I play, I uh, just want to improve, improve in my skills. Roy Krishna will carry a lot of responsibilities on his shoulders and says he is ready after an injury ravaged season. This last season was uh, for me personally was a bit disappointing. I uh, got injured pretty much on the first half of the season and uh, it was the worst uh, nightmare for any player to, to be part of that. So, you know, I recovered really well and uh, credit goes to my, my medical staff. The Fiji side leaves for Papua New Guinea next Thursday. Fiji's first match is against New Zealand at 6pm next Saturday. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Twelve teams will take part in the National Higher Fiji Muslim Association Inter-District Football Competition which starts tomorrow. Sydney is the only overseas-based team taking part at this year's tournament, which for the first time will have prize money on offer. Yeah, this is something new, I'd say. It's a history for football, in, uh, for Muslim football. Uh, we, I personally experienced that uh, teams uh, put a lot of effort and a lot of expense to come up and play games, and uh, they need uh, incentive to win. Uh, when they go back home, they need some kind of incentive. Valelevu plays Navo in the opening match at 9 a.m. tomorrow at the USP Grounds in Suva. This year's South Pacific Bowling Carnival is anticipated to be the biggest ever. More than 200 bowlers from across the Pacific are expected to take part with the majority coming from Australia and New Zealand. The Bowling Carnival will be held in the first week of May. Meanwhile, the Pineapple Cup will be held at the end of this month. That is your sports for this evening. It's back to Jackie now with business. Fiji has been named the world's best destination for beach and family holidays again. Australia ETB Travel Online reports the Australian Readers of International Traveller magazine Readers has voted Fiji for the second year running. This has been announced this month as part of the magazine's second annual Reader's Choice Awards. Fiji has been voted ahead of countries like Hawaii, Bali, Thailand, Tahiti, Vanuatu, Cook Islands, Greek Islands and the Philippines as the world's best place for a beachy island holiday. Fiji is also voted once again as the best destination for a family holiday. showers affected most parts of the country, especially in the afternoon. Looking at the temperatures, Lautoka and Bahia 31 today, closely followed by all other centres who also experienced hot conditions. Tomorrow, it's brief showers about the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands, elsewhere fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers. Moderate southeast winds, moderate to rough seas. And the further outlook is for Saturday and it should see brief showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands, elsewhere fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers. Recapping the main stories for tonight, racist comments made against Fijian players has drawn a major backlash. Sidelpa has denied a rift in party despite accusations, and Fijian school principals have gathered to draw up plans for the future of students. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Moving on to our poll question this week, we are asking, should Jared Hain be included in the sevens team for Olympics? To answer, visit our FBC website. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. Good night.
आपको खुरगंगा के रंजिला का नमस्कार रेडियो फिजी की सुंदर सुंदर यादों का खजाना एकदम बचपन के दिन याद करा देते हैं हमारा नाम जोनी नायडू है हम रहता है मलोलो में और हम टैक्सी ड्राइवर है हम सब टाइम अपन टैक्सी में रेडियो फिजी टू सुनता प्रोग्राम हम सिंह चौका के हैं हमारा नाम है रोजी हम लोग यहाँ पे रेडियो फिजी टू सुनते हैं राम राम मैं रेमस प्रसाद बोलता हूँ तब बताऊँ मैं कोई रहता हूँ मैं जब ही सुना रेडियो फिजी टू ही सुनता हूँ रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन